Hey everybody, it's Aaron Hawaii here again with another tutorial. So I've had a couple questions about how I set up my green screen and I wanted to share with you the basics. So here we go. Okay, so with your webcam connected to your computer, you're gonna want to uh, add a new source to your scene and you're going to find video capture device and click add. And then you should see add new source uh, video capture device, you could call it whatever you want. Uh, and hit add new source and then it'll ask you to find your webcam and uh, select it from the list. You can go ahead and configure the video now, but I would actually save that until you've got the source added. It's a little easier that way. Uh, the default settings should be fine for your camera and then click done. All right, so here I am with my green screen and my cat hiding in the background. And uh, this is pretty much what you're going to see. It's you and your green screen behind you, and we want to blend that out. So what you're going to do now is you're going to right click on your webcam with green screen, and you're going to go to properties, or in some cases you can just double click and that automatically defaults to opening the properties. Once you're in there, you're going to want to make sure that you have a decent exposure. Uh, so you'll click configure video. And then that'll bring you into whatever your brand of manufacturer that created your model camera is going to allow you to manipulate. Um, usually they allow you to change things like the exposure, the focus, sometimes the color temperature. Uh, and you're going to want to get yourself uh, displayed properly. Uh, find some videos on how to manipulate uh, things like exposure and color temperature so that you look natural. All right, so after you've got that set up, you can go ahead and close all that configuration stuff. And then the next thing we wanna do, obviously, is get rid of our green background. So you'll right click your webcam source again, and then you're gonna find filters and click that. Once you're in there, you will see your webcam preview probably, and you'll see any active filters that you already have. You probably won't have any. I've got a couple that I use. Uh, but you're going to want to click the plus to add a filter. And then you will have a drop down and you'll find um, somewhere along the way chroma key. You'll click that and then you'll click done. And that should bring you to the chroma key settings. And now the defaults are probably going to show you blending out just a little bit already. If you've got a green uh, background, I would suggest you just leave it on green. There is an advanced option where you can click custom and then set a specific uh, color on the scale. But I actually find that if I just set it to green, that works pretty well for me. So there will be a couple key settings that you want to manipulate to blend out your background. The first one is similarity. This is probably the sort of uh, the rough tuning that you'll do. And then you'll use smoothness to do a little bit of fine tuning. So we want to get the similarity as close as we possibly can to perfect. And you'll do that by just dragging to see, okay, yeah, that's not going to work. So we want to go in the other direction until we look like we've got it pretty good. That's looking pretty good to me. And if you go too far, you'll start to see that you yourself will begin to blend away. All right, so we don't want to go too far. We want to split the difference as best we can and we won't see much of the finer detail yet, just yet, so you'll just get it roughed in. Now, I would recommend at this point that you go ahead and click Done and see how that looks on your screen. Even more, I would recommend that you make yourself as large as possible for now to see where your detailing is going to quite not be right. Sometimes if your lighting is strange or it's very harsh on your face and you lean towards the camera, you might have areas of your face that even blend out. And now that it's nice and big on the preview screen and I've dragged the settings bar a little bit away so that I can actually see the result live, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and adjust my smoothness. Now what the smoothness is gonna do is it's gonna try to take care of the areas and the edges that aren't quite blending out properly. And this you want to really fine tune. So rather than just dragging this left to right, which is kind of rough, you can actually select the number and then tap up or down on your arrow keys 
to bump that setting one point at a time in whichever direction you think you want to go through. So now I'm going up and I'm starting to notice that I'm getting a little bit of uh, areas blending out again in a way that I don't want. So I've gone too far in one direction and I'll start going back down until those go away completely. Yep, that's pretty good. And now I'm gonna go ahead and go in the opposite direction anyways. And I'm watching my background to see when I start to get little specks or, uh, or noise, or even it starts to turn green again, which we don't want. And I'm trying to find where that starts to happen because then once I start to see that happening and it's really becoming apparent with the, uh, the little, uh, what you can see so far, okay? And I don't want that. So I'm gonna start to head back in the other direction, but that gives me a kind of an idea of what the range of smoothness is that I have, which for this example is somewhere between 50 and 80 for this. All right, so that looks pretty good. I'm gonna go ahead and say okay on that. And then uh, you notice how, hey, my green screen's not really covering so well. I've got kind of like my camera's aimed a little too far. I'm just gonna grab Alt and drag, and I'm gonna crop that out. Another thing you can do is actually add a background image to see what your uh, blend really looks like. So you go to Add Source, you click Image. Find any old image that you've got on the computer that you've been considering using as a background for uh, blending out your green screen. I'll just pick something, doesn't matter which, and I'm gonna drag it below my webcam so that I'm on the front layer. Okay, so you may not be able to see this, but live, I can see a little bit of static in some of the areas of the image. So that's when I wanna go back to my filter and then we're going to adjust similarity and smoothness again. But this time, I'm actually just gonna start with smoothness because I feel like if I can do it by just fine tuning the smoothness, then I'll be in good shape. And so once again, you're gonna uh, select that number so that you can bump it up and down with the arrow keys on your keyboard. So I'm gonna start tapping up and I'm watching that fuzz to try to see when it looks like it's almost gone. If the fuzz starts to show up on you as well, well then you need to back off a little bit. By the way, this is Stink and he's very hungry right now. All right, so one last thing I wanna mention is lighting, which is critical to whether or not your green screen effect looks any good. Wow, look at all those bits. Okay, so uh, what I just purchased recently is this uh, dimmable fluorescent ring light. Uh, which is 18 inches around. It's actually pretty big uh, and uh, puts out about 75 watts, which looks like 600. It's really, really bright, even at the lowest setting. And bright is good because what bright light is going to do is uh, I've got it set up right behind my webcam and just a little bit taller than it so that my shadows actually go kind of down as they go behind me rather than straight back. If the shadows went straight back, then it might actually affect the way that your green screen blends out. When you, See how when I put a shadow there, it kind of like, there's a lot of static because it's having a hard time capturing that perfect green color and blending it away. The price point on these is actually pretty good for what you get. Uh, so you're gonna also want a stand to put this on, adjustable stand, uh, which it does not come with. But it does come with a really nice carrying case, so that's a bonus. They have uh, a couple different versions. They have dimmable silver or white on the inside and an undimmable version. But personally, I like to have the control at the light source to decide how bright it's going to be. It's still pretty bright even at the low setting, which is desirable, uh, but it gets a lot brighter too if you turn it all the way up. Another potential setup that could work for you would be just a light and a softbox. I actually used that prior to getting the light ring and that worked really well too. Uh, and sometimes you can even get something like this where you've got a kit of two lights that come with the diffusers and a carry case and a couple stands. What's nice about having two lights is you can use one for your face and then the second one to light the green screen itself, giving it a nice even green color. That even color is really important 
to making sure that it blends out properly. So you also want to get rid of any wrinkles or shadows or anything like that on the surface of the green screen itself. If you've got a gaming chair or a high back chair where it kind of is seen behind you, you can get something like this, which is a portable background that actually attaches to the chair itself. They're a little pricey, but they work. One last thing that's definitely worth considering is the distance between the green screen and its light source. The farther away it is from your light source, especially if it's a single light, the more difficult it's going to be to blend because blending is really a function of how evenly the light is spread across the green surface. And there you go. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to click like if this was helpful. Subscribe to the YouTube channel. Check out my Twitch stream. And we'll see you later. Bye.